So I'm going to play a game of speed date with you. Mm -hmm, great. What's your go-to pizza topping? Margarita, every time, when in Rome. Salami. Tuna, tuna fish, uh, the, the, the chicken of the sea. What's your most used emoji? The vomit mouth, at the moment. <laughs> oh, a poodle. <laughs> I think it's some, some uh, yellow head with, uh, with eyes like hearts. What's in your pocket right now? I don't have any pockets, but I have lots of stuff next to me. <laughs> lots of tea bags. Nothing, I don't have pockets. My phone. And what's your secret party trick? I can Irish dance. Do you get that out at most parties? No, only at family weddings. Only where there's sort of Irish music. Otherwise I'd be like Irish dancing to, you know, it wouldn't make much sense. Get drunk and dance. Do you have a particular dance, a special? I do something with, um, with my face, which is very irritable to a lot of my friends. They're like, you're doing it again. I like, when I dance, I do, st I do weird, like I go, you know, I do like weird things to not, I guess to not be sexy, because like I do sexy movements and I'm like, I have this third eye looking at myself being like, oh, come on, you can't mean it. Like, really, Destiny's Child. You know, and that's what I have in my head, so I go and be stupid. That's what I do. I'm stupid. Claire said that she does Irish dancing. <laughs> we could be a good match. Yeah, did you, did you at any point do a bit of your funny face dancing to her while she did Irish dancing to you? No, we got drunk very badly, uh, and that was a lot of fun. She ended up putting me in the cab home, so she saved my ass. I can't say MTV can. So she saved my ass. There wasn't a lot of time or room for nights like those because we were very busy, but I remember, you know, just going out with her was um, a lot of fun, yeah. I have an extra row of, of eyelashes. What, so you've, you've got two sets of eyelashes? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. No, you can Google it. If you could have any type of sandwich, what would it be? A baguette, like a really crusty baguette with butter on it, and brie, and basil, and tomatoes. A hoagie. Oh, a club sandwich. Why? Because I'll have a lot of delicious things in between my bread. You know, I'll have the chicken, the bacon, the mayonnaise, I love mayonnaise. I think when I'll have like a, you know, uh, what is that, like a, a false name to check into hotels, I'll call myself Maya Nays. I think that's, I think that's great because I love mayonnaise so much. It's my favorite. If you could have fingers as long as arms or arms as long as fingers, which would you choose? Ah, arms as long as fingers. Yes. Why? Because if you wouldn't be able to pick anything up, would you, with fingers that were as long as arms? It would be, it would be word like an octopus. Fingers as long as arms. Yeah, it's so much more practical. I could reach, you know, I go, go, go gadget arm, and I have the coffee, or I have the french fries, the main. If I had these dinosaur arms, I couldn't do anything. What's the last text you sent? It's probably to ask for food. <laughs> No, I think I just sent a text to my mother this morning. What's your favourite reality TV show? Oh, Queer Eye. Oh, it's not reality, is it, though? But whatever. Queer Eye, just in general. Oh, God. Geordie uh, uh, Shore. Really? I love watching them. I just love the accents. <laughs> I think he fancies us. I think me thinks he fancies me. I can't do it, but I love watching it. It's so like good. tashing on white eye pit. Yeah, yeah. Get me some scram. Oh yeah, see, you can do it. I can't do it. Well, it's That's MTV, so we're like... <laughs> it's MTV. Yeah. Oh great, I didn't even know. Yeah. I don't remember the name of it, but but they used to scream, "Move that bus." Do you remember that? No. It was some kind of a home styling makeover thing. There was so much going on in this movie. What would you say is your funniest or most memorable moment from filming? I um, split the my jumpsuit on several occasions in a really embarrassing way. That's not a fond memory, but a very funny one. <laughs> it's pure leather, and, and pure leather doesn't have a lot of give. I mean, is this front or back, or I'm trying to imagine the Let's ways Let's not of... talk about it. <laughs> I can't talk about it. Having flashbacks. Uh, yeah, no, it, 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 it's split in quite a sensational and awful way for me. Were they able to sew it up and you get back on with work, or do you have spares and it kept happening? There was no spare at the time. They had to reinforce the, the <laughs> gusset of the jumpsuit. It was horrific. Horrific for all concerned. Let's not talk about it. Move on. Move on. So I've got to ask you, talking of kind of black jumpsuits, mm -hmm. there was a, a vacuum PVC looking outfit. There was. It wasn't an outfit, it was a sex bag. A sex bag? I was thinking, what's the terminology sex bag? Yeah. 
So, how, yeah. <laughs> what's the reality like of you working in that? Like, how long were you in that for? It's only when we sit down, it's me. So see, it wouldn't have been uh, for health and safety, I couldn't get in it. Cecilia, who is my physical stunt double, did all of that. She had the wax put over her mouth, she was suffocated. That woman is uh, extraordinary. I, I don't know how she did it. And everybody gave her a round of applause afterwards, but she was like, it was great, I really enjoyed it. And I was like, no way. There's no way I could have been in that bag. So you literally have to go into a ball in the same position as she's yeah. in and then just be like... <gasps> yeah, I had to be in the bag for a bit, but, but not as long as she did. I spoke to Claire about her funniest moment and she said her leather play suit splitting in a very <laughs> awkward <laughs> position. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Can you give any more about what actually happened there? It's funny for the actor. Well, it wasn't funny at the time, I'm sure, but it's it, it kills your day, right? It kills your morning. So there's a robe, you know, like a wardrobe malfunction, like the one I think she was telling about. Usually, okay, there goes your morning. You have to go check, get a new wardrobe change, and then you shoot in less time. So it, for the director, it's never funny. For the director, it's a nightmare. It's like, what's happening? Like, why is not this working? But yeah, usually that's pretty normal in most movies. Yeah. I also wanted to ask about the PVC vacuum sex suit that she's wearing. Yeah. It's crazy and very dangerous as well because the suit is all plastic and it's, it's, it's all sealed up so a person cannot breathe. I think just like it happens in the story, you know, without spoiling too much, but once there's a little hole in her mouth and she can breathe through her mouth. And there was no way around it, Claire needed to do that. She needed to do it herself because there's this scene where she kind of, you know, popped out of that bag. I guess some sort of like rebirth that she has in the movie, almost like she's coming out of this placenta, right? And she's reborn as a, as a character at that point. Um, so it was really tough. It's definitely not the things that it was on her top list of the things she's, she enjoyed the most, I can assure. The funniest moment was when, <laughs> when Claire and I were in the very, very cold uh, together doing a scene that I can't really tell you a lot about, but uh, an emotional scene, intense scene. And she was very badass, she was in the emotion. And I was like, caught, and she's like, oh my god, it's so cold here. Can I have a tea? <laughs> she was like back into the English, you know. I was like, whoa, what is happening? So she's definitely not a method actress, and she can turn it on and off, you know, so I respect that very much. So how did you find doing a lot of the scenes, literally surrounded by freezing cold snow? How long were you outside for? When you're on screen, it's like everything fades away, like you're in the zone and you don't feel it, and then cut, and you're like, oh God, I'm freezing, because you don't have that focus, you don't have that, you know, you're not in that zone anymore. It's interesting what, what that does to you. I think it's most memorable was to see Claire playing Lisbeth for the first time, right? Because you you talk about it, I, you know, you, you have a lot of discussions with the actors, but it's not until one day when, you know, finally the cameras are rolling, and you get, you get to see the actor walking on set being, this person, and for me, I'm a fan of the character, is the day you get to meet her, right? Is, it get, is the day you literally, is the closest thing to get to meet Elizabeth Salander in, 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 in flesh. That's always, for me, in most movies, but particularly in this one, is that day when they walk on set for the first time, and you roll cameras, and you see them pour themselves a coffee, but still, you're right there in the same space with them, and you see them, and, and they're real, and that's a, always a beautiful moment. Just uh, being in Berlin, and, and for such a long time, and and, uh, and shooting with these wonderful people. And uh, the director, Fred Alvarez, is Uruguayan, and also the DOP. And they would make these big barbecues. After we finished shooting, they would like pull out those huge barbecues and, and make food for like 150, 200 people. That's amazing, so they did their own cooking? Which gave a great feeling to the set. Did you go and have some of this barbecue? Yes, he kept on barbecuing that guy. I mean, he, I think he gave four barbecues in the whole, you know, and it was wonderful because he loved, I think for him that was a moment where he could just relax and provide food for people that worked so hard for him. Just So it was kind of a thank you to the whole crew. And it was just so wonderful seeing him with like the big, you know, what is it called? Oh, an apron. Yeah, an apron and like these big chunks of cheese and meat and, very Uruguayan, and it all tastes so good, so. For a film like this, there must be some stuff that can't make the final movie. What can we look out for in the DVD? Oh my gosh. A whole a character that I play. I play a whole character with a ginger wig that's not in it. <laughs> she was great, I loved that ginger wig. So this could be maybe another sister? I just think it could be a whole other character. She needs a, a, a whole other movie, that girl. She was great. 
She had an Adidas jumpsuit. She was amazing. There was a big action scene where you go back to your childhood home. How long did you have to learn the choreography for it? We did the choreography as soon as I got to Berlin, so um, kind of a month before starting shooting, and then all through the shooting we were practicing it, so that's like another three months. But I loved it, I loved it. I mean, I had a, a fight double for that as well. I loved the choreography and doing the sequences. I just really enjoyed it. I'd never really done anything like that before, but um, I loved it. And on the day, it's kind of, it's, it, it gets exhausting, but, but you know, really, really fulfilling. I really loved it. Did you get it straight away, or were there injuries or times where you accidentally punched someone and had to be like, sorry? No, I'm much more there, there saying punch through, and I'm like, no, yeah, because I'm going to hurt him. Just because I'm very conscious of hurting people's faces. But no, I mean, I, I picked up the moves pretty quickly, but it's then about you have to use your muscles in a different way to make it read that you're actually doing it. So you just have to do, it's, it's not actually fighting, it's, it's trying to make it look like you're fighting. I can imagine it's even harder with a gas mask on as well, though, because you can't see properly and you're trying to throw punches. The gas mask was sort of new, yeah. The, the gas mask I got about a week before we started shooting to practice with that. But but, but it was it's, oh, it's real, he's trying to make it as real as possible, I think. It was fun to do that scene because uh, that was the only time everybody came together uh, and worked together on that scene, so that was nice. I mean, fights are always, you know, tricky, and, but, and Claire had a lot of fun learning those choreographies and have to get there. And we, we didn't want them to be too slick, we wanted to be kind of down and dirty and kind of messy. Um, more, more chaotic, like that represents a bit more her spirit. She's not like a perfect, like, you know, kung fu fighter or anything like that. She, she know how to box and that's it. So, so it, it was really, we're trying to go for a very crude kind of, you know, bathroom brawl. And then the rest of, obviously, the rest of all that set piece, which in a way, what I'm proud of it is, I'm proud of is the fact that it is one of the things that come alive in the editing, meaning it's a combination what really comes at the end, there's a big set piece at the end that involves all the characters. And it's really one of those things that work because of the craft of filmmaking. You combine all the elements in the right way and suddenly you have a, something that feels huge. And maybe on the day it wasn't that big, but then on the screen it feels like massive. Would you be up for a sequel? What do you think your character would be doing? Oh God, I'm just concentrating on this one coming out. Don't sign me up for work yet. Yeah, no, I'm just concentrating on this one coming out and see how it goes down. Were you a big fan of the books originally? I was, yeah. I love the genre. I love, you know, I love dark movies. I love when girls just take take it on, you know. They, uh, and as a woman as well, I felt just very close to her. Um, you know, being in my 20s when there was not so much, like now, right now, there's openings, you know, for women to tell stories that are directed by female directors or written by female writers. So you look at the characters through female eyes, which is fantastic that we get an opening now and we get, you know, um, to work like that. I think it's fantastic. But when I was in my, when I was in my 20s, it wasn't really like that yet. Um, so Lisbeth, as a character to me, gave me a lot of hope for, you know, and so it was a woman that I saw, you know, that I felt, yeah, I could, I could identify with. When I read the books the first time, I, I had no idea I was going to be a part of this uh, millennium universe. At that time in Sweden, it was hard to escape the domination of the books. Everybody knew about these books. Everybody read these books. These books are, are very special because they, they kind of mix Swedish uh, everyday life with, with something bigger. So, so it's exciting.